know, this is really some, some wild stuff here. In fact, I mean, hard to believe it's real, except, you know. Indeed, it's hard to believe that anything about this is real, but that's what Musk said about Mechazilla, his giant machine. There it is, tall, majestic, and from the pages of a science fiction novel. Despite having been ridiculed since the very beginning of formulating the idea, Musk and his team at SpaceX are now proving step by step how shallow the previous judgments were. Let's take a deeper analysis of this machine and all of its capabilities as well as its promises for the future on today's episode of Great SpaceX. Launch towers for rockets are nothing new, but SpaceX's Mechazilla is the exception. In December of 2020, Musk claimed that the firm planned to use the launch tower's arms to catch the Super Heavy booster as it returns to Earth. But as soon as the idea was heard, it received a multitude of mixed reviews. For Musk fans, they're excited about the advancements. They are looking forward to witnessing a new initiative, breaking old rules, opening a new path like in a sci-fi movie. Some Musk fans even have already created animations of their interpretations of how it might work. However, where there may be praise for the innovation, there comes an equal amount of skepticism. They laugh at Elon Musk, saying that he is crazy and that this idea is a really bad one and that it's useless. It's safe to say that many bitter words were uttered. However, perhaps they have forgotten that Elon Musk is the one who has the ability to make the impossible possible. He completely changed the electric car industry, and he can do the same with the space industry. Musk and his team spent a great amount of effort on designing and building a massive launch and catch tower at the South Texas site. Standing more than 150 meters tall, it supports the fully stacked rocket during fueling and launch operations. Then, minutes after launch, it will catch the first stage booster with massive chopsticks as the rocket slows down near the ground. The entire process of designing and construction only took about 13 months. That's right, just a little over a year to finish this enormous structure. It must be said that this is extremely impressive progress. Interestingly enough, the tests showed that this giant machine actually works. The first time SpaceX used building-sized arms installed on Starbase's approximately 145 meter tall launch tower that is meant to lift and grapple Starship a massive upper stage more than 80 meters off the ground and lower on top of a super heavy booster was on February 9th. During the process, the giant robot seemed to perform perfectly, pausing only once during the ascent. After holding Starship S-20's weight for about an hour and attaching two smaller stabilization arms to the side of the rocket, the Mechazilla arms began to lift Starship in earnest. 20 minutes later, with the tip of Starship S-20's nose just shy of the top of the launch tower, the lift reached its apogee. At their peak, the tower's arms then swung Starship about 45 degrees until it was directly above Super Heavy Booster 4's inner stage. The launch tower's Starship Quick Disconnect arm, responsible for connecting the upper stage to ground systems, then swung in, partially deploying and grabbing Super Heavy to fully stabilize the booster. Finally, once the booster was secured and SpaceX was confident in the alignment of the two massive rocket stages, the tower arms carefully lowered Starship onto the Super Heavy's inner stage, where several clamps grabbed onto the ship to fully mate the pair. While the actual near-term utility of those arms remains ambiguous at best, their first successful use is an undeniably impressive technical achievement. Perhaps most impressive of all is that on the very first try, Lifting Starship and stacking it on top of Super Heavy with the launch and integration tower took just three hours from the start of the lift to a fully mated rocket. Additionally, though SpaceX did get lucky with minimal wind, it's also impressive just how little uncontrolled movement was visible as Starship hung in the air hundreds of feet above the ground. Virtually no swaying was visible, meaning that the arms were doing their job of stabilizing the massive rockets in a situation where even a gentle breeze could make stacking Starship with a crane far too risky. In fact, SpaceX has used Starbase's Mechazilla Tower and arms to stack a Starship upper stage on top of a Super Heavy booster for the second time on March 15th. This time around though, SpaceX clearly learned a great deal from its second February 9th Starship stack, and was able to complete the stacking process several times faster on March 15th. During the second attempt, depending on how one measures it, it took SpaceX around three and a half hours from the start of the lift to Starship fully resting on Super Heavy, with stack number three 
however, SpaceX was able to lift, translate, lower, and attach Starship to Super Heavy in just over an hour. Notably, SpaceX managed that feat without a claw-like device meant to grab and stabilize Super Heavy during stacking operations. Prior to stack number three, SpaceX removed both of the swing arm's claws, meaning that it had no way to grab onto Super Heavy. However, that diminished capability clearly appeared to have zero impact on the ease or speed of the stacking process, given that it was completed a full three times faster than stack number two. Despite that, what really saved time on stack number three was a faster lift and fewer pauses throughout, especially while lowering Starship the last several meters onto Super Heavy. During stack number two, SpaceX took close to an hour and a half to fully lower Ship 20. The same sequence just took around 20 minutes during stack number three. Regardless, we can see a noticeable improvement with each test. More evidence of progress came last Thursday when SpaceX rolled its Booster 7 prototype of the Super Heavy rocket to the launch site. It was lifted for the first time by chopsticks on the launch tower and placed on its launch mount. Seeing a rocket lifted with 33 Raptor 2 engines was indeed a sight to behold. Of course, it's not over yet. SpaceX's Mechazilla is more mind-blowing than you would think. Elon Musk confirmed that in the future, the process of returning the Super Heavy launch vehicle and the Starship spacecraft to Earth will take place exclusively with the help of Mechazilla. With the Mechazilla launch tower, Musk hopes to reduce the turnaround time to one hour so that the Starship can be capable of flying three times a day. This was stated once again by Musk on the night of February 10th, where he said, We're aiming for rapid reusability, which is why the booster is going to take off and then fly back to the launch tower and aspirationally land on the arms, which does sound insane. SpaceX has created a launch tower that permits it to stack and manipulate Starships and Super Heavy boosters in far worse conditions than cranes can tolerate and catch both rocket stages out of mid-air. This giant pair of steel arms will enable SpaceX to attempt Starship's first orbital test flights, but first, SpaceX needs the FAA's approval to do that. It's exciting to see the strides that SpaceX is making to ensure safe interplanetary travel in the near future, and SpaceX's Mechazilla will be at the helm of making this future a reality. What else do you think is in store for SpaceX in terms of machinery that can aid in the future of space travel? Tell us your ideas in the comments section. Otherwise, that's it for today's episode. If you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. And as a quick note, if you have advertising needs, you can contact us directly via email. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.